Congratulations on choosing the mini line, a great setup for beekeepers with 200 or more hives. To help you set yours up, we videotaped the entire process here at Better Bee, from the big setup details down to the nitty gritty. If you're thinking of upgrading to this great extracting line, watch this video instead to see the amazing things it does. The line is best installed on a concrete floor, but some users have also installed it on a sturdy wooden floor. Place the components in their approximate locations, making sure that you have enough room to maneuver your full supers in, your empty supers out. The sump will extend out of the rear, so be sure to leave some room there as well. Level the extractor by turning the threaded feet. A pallet jack is handy for lifting it up as you turn the feet. Connect the uncapping machine section to the extractor, but do not tighten the bolts yet. Adjust the level of the uncapping section. If your floor is pitched for a floor drain, this process may require a few adjustments. When finished, the extractor should be level in both directions and the uncapper should be level in both directions. Now we need to make sure the extractor is properly connected to the uncapper section. To do this, we need to open up the extractor first. When the power is disconnected, this lock can't be opened until the power is connected. There is a way to bypass it. So to bypass it, loosen this screw here and then take an Allen wrench and turn this in the direction of unlock. Then this can be bypassed and the lid can be opened. But for safety purposes, when you're actually using it, it should always be put back into uh, regular mode here and this screw tightened. Stainless steel nuts and bolts attach each component to the next. In our setup, we had issues with the frame bridge hitting the lid of the extractor. This was because our uncapper wasn't quite level yet. Our floor had such a pitch leading to the floor drain that we needed to add shims under the extractor. We also snugged the hinges of the extractor section a little bit to reduce play. This is the transition from the uncapper ramp to the extractor. It should be smooth with a slight down step. The frame rail on the bridge can be adjusted if necessary. Here, we'll use some new frames and test the transition from the uncapper into the extractor. When we tested, our frames were fitting badly under the overhead bars. You only want about an eighth of an inch gap here. We placed an eighth of an inch shim on top of the frame then loosened all the bolts and raised the frame rails until the shims touch the frame rails. This adjusts only the height of this frame rail. Be sure to make the same adjustment on all four rails. The width of the rails can also be adjusted if needed. When you're done, make sure all the bolts are tight. Attach the controller box using the four bolts. Lyson very helpfully has made the cords of different styles. It's hard to mess it up. Connect each cord up with the matching socket. 
the prep time takes a while. You want to dedicate probably one entire day to setting this up and adjusting things. Wherever you see a stainless steel part with protective plastic film, peel that plastic right off. Connect the float switch to the pump. The switch automatically activates the pump when the honey rises in the sump. Here we're adjusting the feet so that the sump is the same level as the extractor so that the two lines can meet up and get a sanitary fitting attached to them. Be sure to tighten those thumb screws on the, every sanitary fitting down real tight. Open the ball valve so that the honey can flow once you get started. When the handle points the same way as the pipe, that means it's open. Make sure the clean out honey gate is closed tightly. This is only used at the very end when you're done extracting and washing up. We're rolling in the wax extruder so that the edge of the hopper just goes underneath the ramp where honey drips from frames after they're uncapped. The wax extruder is the thing that catches all those drippy cappings and squeezes those wax cappings and gets the honey out of them. We're going to connect this extruder to the side of the sump opposite the extractor with two more sanitary fittings. Now the extruder rolls into place so you can place it exactly where you want and we need to lock those wheels. Install the coarse baffles near the inlets to the sump. Install the finer baffles closer to the outlet out of the sump. There are many ways to reconfigure the sump baffles. The pump and the warming element of the sump and the wax extruder and the extractor all plug into this master control box. This big red button is the emergency stop switch. There's a key for opening it up stored here. It's pretty rare that you'll have to open it up though. New extracting lines require a 30 amp, 240 volt plug, which better be can supply, or you might provide one to match your existing outlet. The circuit should be rated for at least 20 amps. All the other parts have their special sockets. To keep the cords out of the way, we prefer to run the power overhead. And remember, this is going to be a sticky process when it gets going. You might have to rinse the floor daily at the end of each day, so keep your cords up and tidy. And don't forget the pump, which takes all that honey from the extractor, from the extruder, from the sump pumps it up, up into your tank. It can be run in reverse. Either direction is fine, so it doesn't matter which way you orient the hoses. Depending on how your room is set up, you may want to uh, place your pump and set these hoses up in different ways. Whenever making adjustments to the uncapper, cover the wax extruder funnel. You don't want anything to drop into the extruder except cappings. If you suspect something dropped in, shine a light in. A magnetic wand from an auto supply store may help you retrieve nuts, bolts, or tools that fell in. Before trying to uncap any honey, it's best to use some new frames to make adjustments. The first adjustment to the uncapper 
is to set it for the proper size frame. In this case, we will extract all of our medium frames first, and then later adjust it and extract all of our deep frames from our deep supers. Put a medium frame on the uncapper rails. Adjust the lower guide upward until it touches the bottom bar of the frame. This keeps the frames vertical as they enter the uncapper. Next, run some empty new frames through the uncapper. Turn off the motor when the frame is going down through the knives. We're adjusting the vertical flange that is squeezing the side bars of the frame, left and right. It should fall vertically down through these flanges without getting tilted or pinched. The frame needs to be centered from front to back with respect to the knives on both sides. There are two adjustments that affect this clearance. One is the position of the frame in the track. If the track is well centered with the chain, then the frame is in the right place. Yep, it's got the right amount of room there. He's done adjusting the track above, and now he's going to adjust this track. So here's where it's too tight, so zoom. To create a gap here, we'll loosen these two nuts and then slide this toward you. This is a carriage bolt on the back side. So now we're just going to move this parallelly out. Parallelly. Maybe a hair less. I think that's about right, just like that. So this is adjusted to the minimum setting, the lowest setting right now. So that's the, as low as I would ever want to uncap, about that far. Moving this handle up and down moves the blade in and out, both blades in and out, to, so you can uncap shallow or pretty deep. Um, see the space under this knife uh, gets bigger or smaller. There is some play in the frame and the play depends on how much propolis there is. But we'll start with this as our initial adjustment. For, for starting point, I'm going to back this off some by lifting this lever and then tightening this. Just widening it a little bit as my starting point. Okay. And then tighten this up. And we can adjust that easily in the future. The knives can also be individually adjusted. As you see here, if you follow this knife shaft through the body of the machine, you get to this collar. Mark the initial position of the knife shaft collar on the knife shaft with a marker. Loosen the two set screws on the shaft collar while holding the knife. Move the knife to the desired location and then tighten the set screws. The adjustment here is used if you want to move just one knife out from the frame. You can see by the magic marker mark that the central shaft has been rotated a tiny bit clockwise. So let's look at it once again from left to right. On the far left you have the the uncapper that stands up tall, the frame rack, which holds frames that are uncapped, moving towards the extractor on the right. Underneath the ramp, the wax extruder here, and the sump here. And on the far right is the racks that hold frames after they leave the extractor.
Remember, if you have trouble setting up or have questions about adjustments, give us a call at BetterBee.